Hello and welcome to Science Works Online. You're watching Between Two Beakers with me, your host, Chris Solo. First, let us tell you a little bit about Science Works in case you haven't been able to visit us in Oregon. Science Works is a hands on museum with lots of fun exhibits that help people of all ages learn about science. With us being online, we thought it'd be a great way to connect with students, families all over the world. We have a lot of exciting demonstrations and experiments in store for you in the coming weeks. We will also bring in science experts to talk about their fields and answer any of your questions. We're aiming to be online every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. Uh, we'll have a series of facilitated activities. We'll do some demonstrations. We'll talk about some of the experiments we did in the previous show. And we'll do some experimenting and tinkering. But before we get into today's facilitated activity, let's hear some exciting news from Maya. I uh, can't hear you, Maya. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Well, um, my name's Maya. I'm here to do the news. We have some interesting news today at ScienceWorks. Well, not at ScienceWorks, but in the science world. Our first piece of news is growing new neurons. Previously, we only thought that people had a set amount of neurons by the time that they had reached adolescence and they would grow no more. But a research facility discovered that a 43-year-old man has been able to grow and sustain his um, immature neurons past adolescence. So that's pretty exciting. We can still keep growing our brains. That is exciting. <laughs> For our next set of news, unicorns. <laughs> Can we make them real? This is not Jurassic Park. They are very nice and docile. Um, in a report from Science News for Children, uh, the reporter stated that she checked in with a lot of scientists to see if it's possible to genetically modify unicorns. and. The answer was no. It would be too <laughs> difficult, and there is no, there's no good science, and we shouldn't play God, because unicorns never existed in real life. Uh, fun fact: It was Greek people who misunderstood field reports from a person who went to Africa and wrote about rhinoceros. So you can't bring something to life that never existed. But I have a unicorn Our right here. It's real. <laughs> it's real. Oh, that's a that's a little bit fake. I'm sorry. For our last really exciting piece of news, I saved the biggest news for last. Bringing life to Mars. This news helps not only Mars, but also helps us. Scientists at the University of Berkeley have just, oop, I'm still figuring out the kinks. They discovered <laughs> that nano nanowires and bacteria equal photosynthesis. This photosynthesis is stronger than any photosynthesis that any plant can develop on its own. So it can produce much more oxygen, helping us reduce our own CO2 levels and bring oxygen to the planet of Mars so we can start our own Mars colonies. Awesome. And that's what's in the news today. <laughs> the science news. Back to you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maya. Uh, so let's get ready for our activity. Please give a warm welcome to our curiosity expert, Ash. Hi there, Chris. Hi, Ash. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited to get started. Yeah. So uh, today, we're. are you ready to try making a straw rocket? <laughs> I am very much ready for that, yes. Awesome. And uh, we've got some materials that people probably have just hanging around their house. So uh, what have you got to work with today, Chris? I have a uh, some paper. I have some tape. I have a straw. I chose to use a metal straw because that's what I have. Uh, mm -hmm. I have some uh, little index cards and some scissors and a pen. 
Great. So we're going to work together and think about how we can turn all those materials into a rocket that we can do some fun experiments with. Let's do it. All right. So first thing you're going to want to do is take your index card and let's measure it against your straw. Okay. So since you're using an index card, you won't probably have to cut it short. If somebody is using a piece of like, oh, I see what you're going to do your index card for. Sorry, I didn't see your paper. Yes, sorry. All right, so let's, sorry, that's okay. You're going to use your index card for another part of the rocket later. Yes. All right, so let's take your straw and measure it on your paper. So Ready. just lay the straw down on the paper. Yep. And we want the straw to hang off the edge of the paper just a little bit. Okay. So give yourself a little bit of extra um, when you roll your paper up around your straw, you're going to want to have maybe just a little bit of extra so you can put some air into that rocket because that's it. how we're going to fuel our rocket. Yeah. So, so I should cut the rem the remaining off? Yeah, you can okay. uh, mark it and then just cut it straight across. So you're just going to cut your paper a little shorter. Got it. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, what kind of paper are you using today, Chris? Uh, this is just regular printer paper. All right. So uh, people who are making a rocket at home... If you've got a printer, you can use that kind of paper. Um, have you tried to ever do this with any different kind of paper? Uh, not yet, but I think I might do that after this. I might test out some so, other yeah. options. We'll see how this flies with the printer paper, and then if we want to, we can make some different modifications and see how that affects how a rocket's going to fly. Okay. So you're going to roll your paper up around your straw. Got it. And you don't want it to be so loose that there's big gaps, but you don't want it to be so tight you can't slide the straw out. You're kind of going to make an empty tube. Got it. Okay. So I am rolling the paper mm -hmm. around the straw. Uh, it's pretty tight. It's not super tight, but it's not loose. I think we're going to be That's in good, good shape. You want it to be tight enough that you can build up some air pressure when you uh, yeah. blow through the straw. I did not prepare tape strips. <laughs> oh, okay. That's okay. Okay. Am I just going to tape this down the line? Yeah, so once you make a tube with your paper, you can take your tape and just kind of tape that crease in the paper to, to shut your tube. Got it. Okay. You uh, can uh, why why would we do that? Why would we make sure that the entire seam is is taped? We want to make sure that we've got a nice tight tube because we're going to be building up some air pressure inside the tube to give our rocket the thrust that it's going to need to get up in the air. Got it. Okay. I'm just taking care of some technical things real quick and trying to get my tape off sure yeah for people who are building at home uh if you're noticing crits is kind of paused now so one thing you can think about is if you want to tear off your tape strips in advance yep. you're probably going to need maybe three to four strips of tape for this whole project Got it. okay we have our All straw. Right. And our little straw rocket is going to be able to show us uh, how other rockets work, too. Okay. How big rockets that you might see Elon Musk or NASA firing off work. They're all going to work on these same four fundamental principles of light. Got it. Okay, so now that you've got your uh, body of your rocket, um, we're going to take your index cards and we're going to make some fins. Fins, okay. Does it matter yeah. what the fins look like? Um, 
basically the shape of the fin is going to impact how your rocket moves in the air. Okay. And so I would probably start off with a so maybe probably four triangle shaped fins. Okay, I can do that. And then once we build this rocket, if we want to change it up and maybe either change a different shape of fin or a different number of fins, mm -hmm. then we can try that. Okay. So if you are following along at home, you can take an index card or just a heavier piece of paper and you're going to be making some little triangles that you're going to attach to your rocket. And these fins are going to help stabilize your rocket as it flies through the air. Yeah, and I'm just, I cut out one of my fins and I'm using it to measure my other one. So they're all the same size. Yeah, I'm noticing you're kind of using it as a little guide. That's a good idea. Cool. So let me cut these other three one, three of them out. Okay. Let's see my my cutting skills are mm -hmm. not failing me today. All right. And let's see. Okay. So I have my four fins. Great. Then where do you think we want to attach these fins, Chris? Uh, probably at the, the base, maybe, where we actually yeah. use the air to... Yeah, let's, let's try putting the fins nearer to the part of the straw where we're going to be blowing the air into the straw. Got it. Okay. That's another thing that when we do different variations, uh, we can play around with what happens when we put the fins in different places. But for now, let's start out close to the base. And Chris, it looks like you are taping onto the fin and then kind of just taping it right onto the rocket. Is that right? That is right, yeah. All right. Is that what I should be doing? Oh, uh, that's probably what I would try, yeah. So people who are following along at home, you can uh, use just a piece of tape and kind of, it looks like you're hinging it a little bit, Chris. Is yeah. that, am I seeing that right? Yeah. Can show I see the camera Dan Ruby thinks that this is rad. I think it's rad too, Dan. And uh, <laughs> Dragonfall 17 feels like it's time for another space race. So yeah, we can uh, play with our rockets and we can see whose rockets can go the farthest and the fastest. That would be fun. Yeah, we can compete with people all over Oregon and any other viewers who are tuning in from anywhere else. We'll see who can make their rockets go the fastest and the farthest. That sounds challenge accepted. All right. All right. There's my fin. Oh, Dan wants to know what we get if we win. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll give you a shout out here on Between Two Beakers so you'll get some fleeting internet fame. <laughs> All right. So we have our fins. All right. So if we were to take our rocket right now and put it on the straw and blow through it, do you think we'd be building up very much air pressure? Uh, no, probably not because there's a hole at the end of this thing. Yeah, all that air would probably come just rushing out that big hole in the front. So we need to put a nose on our rocket. Uh, do I use the index card again? Yeah, you can take your index card. Okay. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a circle. A circle. How big of a circle? About maybe two inches in diameter. So two inches from one side to the other. Um... If you have a bottle cap, like a milk cap, yeah. or a, a, like a hero click space. I think this might work. A really big button. Yeah, there you go. That's a good size? Yeah, that's great. Perfect. 
I want to say hi to uh, new people who are just turning in. We're working. Chris and I are making a straw rocket together. Yes, and uh, don't forget to follow. Uh, you'll be notified anytime that we have other experiments or other videos that are posting live. I can't. So now, cut Chris, a uh, I see you're you're cutting out your circle. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to cut a little slit in your circle because we want to turn the circle into a cone. If you've ever had a snow cone, you know how those paper cups, if we were to unfold it, it would be sure. a big round circle. Uh, should I I... See, uh, sorry, yes. Yeah, should I do this at, at the radius? Just cut a slit to the center of the cone? Yeah. Okay. We're just going to make a little, basically create a radius in the circle. We're going to fold it up. Kind of like a birthday hat. And I'm going I see to... Leah Ruby says hi. Hi, Leah. I'm very, I'm concentrating right now. So just like that, yeah. I'm going to keep turning it. Yeah, absolutely. And we can take a little tiny piece of tape and kind of put the tape on that little slit you made. Okay. And it just sits on top. Yep, we're going to tape your nose cone onto the rocket, Got just it. like a little hat. Like a little hat. Yeah. Rocket party, so we're going to put a party hat on our rocket. I don't need more tape. Are there other things you can do besides a party hat for the top of your rocket, or is that the most efficient? Oh, yeah. Way? If you want to be super efficient, um, you can just kind of pinch the top of your paper and oh. you can just kind of fold it off if you want to try and experiment you could take a really thin piece of clay and you could make kind mm. of a molded little nose cone with the clay how do you think the clay would be different from your paper nose cone uh it would be heavier so in yeah. theory it it could go further because it was heavier, but it would also the nose dive once it was done. It would definitely add a lot of weight to your nose, so that's going to affect the angle of your rocket. And one experiment we can try today is what is the best angle to get the best uh, kind of a ballistic curve is what I would call it. Uh, so we want to figure out, do we want to shoot our rocket straight, aiming straight ahead? or aiming up at kind of like a 45 degree angle, we can try to see which angle makes our rocket go the farthest. Got it. Okay. So I have my so, tip taped. I don't think there's any air holes in it. My fins awesome. are made. Oh, Fredboy89 said, what if we tried this with a balloon? Oh. That is a really cool idea, Fredboy. Um, we definitely could try that out if you want to try that experiment and take a video of it. Uh, Chris, where should people send their pictures and videos? Uh, yeah, you can, uh, if you do just post on social media, Instagram or Facebook, just tag scienceworks to go T-O-G-O, uh, and then we'll be able to see it there. Or you can email uh, your images and things to online. Oops, that's not the right one. It's uh, online at scienceworksmuseum.org. Let me pull that up. All right, right. so Chris, uh, are you ready to try out this rocket? Yes, I am. Okay, so we're going to put your straw back into your little empty tube. Got it. Okay. And then you're going to be providing the fuel for this rocket. So the fuel for this rocket is what? Uh, would be my breath, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the amount of fuel you give the rocket, whether you give it a really fast, quick, uh, powerful puff of air or just a gentle puff of air, that's going to affect how a rocket's going to move. Got it. Okay. All Let's right. So are you ready to try it? Sure. Let's get a countdown, maybe. All right. And if you're uh, trying this at home, you can count down with us. So we're going to count down from three, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one, launch. Whoa. Oh, that went really fast. <laughs> that was really fast. How far did it go? Uh, I mean, my room's, it went about 12 feet, and I hit the wall. Oh, that's awesome. 
Yeah. So, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go, yeah. If you are wanting to demonstrate your rocket at home, you could set up a little target area and you could measure off. We know that a rocket can go at least 12 feet, so maybe start by measuring 12 feet from your target. And then you can see if you can go back up to 18 feet and keep seeing how far you can go. So be sure to let us know uh, how far your rocket is able to go. That is um, really were you cool. at Were you at an angle when you launched, Chris? Uh, I aimed up, yeah. Awesome. So uh, what do you think would happen if you shot it just straight? Uh, it wouldn't go as far because of the, the pitch. Yeah, we could try it if you want. Yeah, let's try it. So just straight. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. All right, how far do you think it went that time? Uh, maybe half the distance. It nosedived pretty quickly. So that's another thing you guys can try at home is uh, vary your angles. See where you get the that. See if your rocket arcs kind of in a curve. We call that curve a parabola. So see if you can follow, get a friend or video and trace if your rocket makes a nice curve in the air when you shoot it and see if those kind of rocket shots go farther and faster yeah awesome uh ash we have any more science about the rocket or any other information we want to give our viewers at home well one thing that is kind of cool with rockets is uh if you've heard of isaac newton he's uh, done a lot of stuff with physics he lived back in the 1700s so a few hundred years ago he was really interested in how things moved, and he uh, kind of discovered, he did a lot of studying about how things move. So these rockets show us all of his different laws of motion. So right now when your rocket's just sitting on the table, is that rocket going to move if we don't move it? No. Is it going to ever move if, if nothing blows against it or touches it? No, it will just sit there. Yeah, so uh, objects that are kind of just sitting around resting, stay resting until some force, some push or pull in some direction acts on them. And I mean, gravity is acting on the rocket right now because it's not yeah. floating around in the air. Then we saw uh, for every, like the mass of the rocket is going to affect how much force we have to use to launch it. Okay. So if we were to use a rocket that was made, if we want to make a big rocket, from like a paper towel roll Got it. Uh, and we wanted to maybe launch it with a balloon. We might need a balloon to launch a rocket that was that heavy because do you think that if we used just a straw in our breath, it would go very far? Hmm, maybe. If we took a paper towel roll and stuck a straw in it and tried to launch it that way, first of all, like the hole would be so big. Yeah. So we'd need more force to get a Got heavier it. rocket off the ground. That's why, like, a NASA rocket, we don't have a giant straw that somebody's blowing really hard into to try to launch it <laughs> into space. We have to launch it, you know, with fuel. And then the third law of motion that we saw today was for every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. So when you blew forward into your straw, your rocket pushed through the air and the air was pushing back on your rocket. Got it. And these are all things that are a lot more fun to actually try out in real life than just to talk about. So I hope that everybody who's been kind of checking out our feed will make some rockets today and give it a try and then show us what they made. Yes. Uh, and on that note, so I'm gonna take some time later today uh, to build some other rockets, try different sizes, try adding more fins using different materials. Uh, I'll probably make several examples, um, and then I'm going to go outside and actually see how they move and everything else, and I'll record that. And come back on Thursday, and I'll go ahead and show you what I have and what I came up with, and you all can do the same. So you all can uh, you know, record, take photos of your designs, send them to online at scienceworksmuseum.org, or just tag us on social media at uh, scienceworks2go, T-O-G-O, 
uh, and we can see all the cool things you all come up with. I am going to try that paper towel tube. I'm going to try to figure out yeah. a way to make that work, a bigger rocket, a smaller rocket. Um, yeah. So, Ash, what can our viewers at home look forward to for the project we're going to do on Thursday? Well, Thursday we're going to be playing around with some more physics and a little bit more engineering. We're going to make a zip line. Okay. And we'll see uh, if we can get, uh, I see you like uh, minis and toys, so do I. So if I wanted to transport a toy from one side of my house to the other without carrying it, <laughs> maybe I want to have a zip line or other device oh, to send yeah. it across the house. That could be really fun. Yeah, I'm excited yep. for that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ash, is there anything else, any final notes you want to leave with our viewers at home? Uh, just stay curious, uh, keep trying things out, and show us what you come up with. You guys will come up with some great ideas at home. Awesome. Thank you, Ash. Thank you for your time. Uh, and yeah. we will see you on Thursday. All right. Bye, guys. All right. So, uh, whoop, that's not the right one. Just kidding. There we go. So we are going to do a little bit of uh, experimentation, a little uh, little segment we're going to be calling Da Vinci's Workshop. Uh, so we are in my workshop. Today we are going to be exploring Lego building. Uh, potentially, let's see if we make a rocket or make something along those lines. I'll take feedback from the chat. Um, I do have a little pile of Legos here. Uh, so we can talk about some of the things we want to build. Um, probably should have grabbed more Legos. Uh, but so every every week we will wrap up this sh this show with um, some sort of exploration. Uh, next week we're or on Thursday we're gonna explore like fossils and things. So I do have a microscope that will be connected to the computer so we can all look at different items. So go ahead and email. Uh, us at science work online at scienceworksmuseum.org for some ideas and things that you may or may not want to see in the uh, microscope or you can post them in chat right now as well so what are some things rocket related uh, or are we just going to make a rocket i think we just do that um, how can we make a rocket with the random pieces that i have does anybody have any ideas what are some pieces that are are pertinent to Making Lego rockets. Anybody? Okay. This is very loud. I'm going to mute my mic so I can move these things around real quick. probably the best way to do this so anybody have any ideas we're gonna try to make a rocket if we make a rocket with legos will that rocket move could we do the same thing that we're trying to do with the straw rocket with legos do we think that could actually work yes answer is yes if we have the right pieces and are able to um kind of figure this out Yeah, let's um, let's see. Take for four long Lego pieces in a circle. Yes. Uh, let's let's shift gears a little bit. Um, I'm gonna do something real quick. Let's go ahead. It's all right. Okay, so uh, let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, looking at the stock of pieces I have, I don't quite have. Uh, all the pieces that I would need. So let's try this some different way. So let's talk about uh, building a Lego rocket with Legos. So how we can make a, what is it, take four Lego pieces for the circle. Yeah, so we could we could constantly build the, the wall. We could make a square rocket. If we have curved pieces, we could make a round rocket. 
And as long as all those pieces are connected and we have some sort of piece on the top that seals it all together. However, now those rockets would be a little bit heavier. So something that I think we would have to figure out is how can we get enough oomph into that Lego rocket? So your uh, activity, so you choose to take it, if you all have Legos at home or other materials other than just paper and straw rockets, some other sort of building materials, could we build some really neat rockets and go ahead and share that with us here as well. Um, and then we can uh, revisit that on Thursday. Um, but that would be the end of our uh, Tinker segment. We are still working out the kinks of some of these things. So uh, stay tuned for Thursday's show. It will start at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific. Uh, so we all hope that you enjoyed the show. Make sure to share on social media at Scienceworks to go T O G O. Uh, any of the really cool paper rockets you build, or any of the Lego rockets that you make. Um, and I want to leave you all with a science joke. So does anyone know the answer to this question? Why can you never trust atoms? Anybody? Anybody? Because they make everything up. Ha <laughs> ha! If you have any really good jokes, better than my dad jokes, please go ahead and send them to the email that you see in the link. And we will uh, <laughs> see you all on Thursday. Have a wonderful day.